Hey everyone, welcome to Psychology with my wife. I'm the wife. And I'm the psychology student. Welcome to episode 11. <laughs> this is a special episode because it is our first episode that we are officially married and recording. Yes, it is. So finally, I am the wife. For real. Woot woot. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but... I am actually super duper disappointed because I was very excited for our first episode filming as husband and wife to show off my bling, but if you are watching us on YouTube, you might notice Gianna's looking a little blingless. I'm actually... <laughs> blingless. <laughs> blingless. <laughs> I am actually, unfortunately, wearing a black silicone ring because... My rings, we wanted to get them soldered together because they would otherwise I'd have to shift them and fiddle with them all day long. So we went to get them soldered through our warranty at the jewelry store. And they actually, Julian got an email this morning that they were ready to pick up. And so we had waited about three weeks for them. So we were so excited and Julian was like, we need to go get those before we film. And I was like, yes. So we go to the store and the employee hands me my ring and they soldered them together backwards. <laughs> I can't believe they did that. <laughs> and I just looked at the ring and I was like, this is wrong. And the employee comes and he's like, what do you mean? It looks good. And I'm like, no. So I'm going to have Julian insert photos because on our account we have photos of the insurance for insurance purposes they took a photo when i gave them the rings to get soldered and then they took a photo now because they're gonna have to go take them apart and re-solder them properly and i'll have julian put the photo side by side and you can see in the one photo how the ring was sitting together when i gave it to them to get soldered and the ring is sitting properly and then in the other photo you'll see how they gave it back to me and the ring is backwards and it just I was so disappointed <laughs> yeah very disappointed but you, you would have th thought that they would have known that even it, it's very obvious that it's backwards yeah the, it's, it's hiding the diamonds yeah yeah the guy said to me he's like well did you request for them to do it the the way that I wanted to he's like did you request for them to do that and I'm like no I didn't think I needed to because the ring is literally designed with a, a cutout to hold the diamond in place there and like how it is like you'll see in these photos and we'll post it on to check our Instagram stories at PWMW podcast if you're not on YouTube and I'll post the photos so you can see how they did the diamond the rings backwards but i was just baffled luckily we have insurance and whatnot so mm -hmm. it's not an extra charge to redo it but now i don't get my rings for another like month almost sorry gianna but my ring looks good <laughs> <laughs> his ring looks so good oh my gosh you guys when we went to get my ring soldered originally we asked the lady at the store if we could have julian's ring cleaned while we were there and she commented like three separate times to us about how beautiful his ring is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I'll post a close-up photo of Julian's ring in our stories as well, just in case someone wants to see. Perfect. I'm sure everyone <laughs> wants to see it. Everyone wants to see for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, on another note, I got a new job. Well, it's kind of a job. It's very, 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 very casual. It's the company's called Spinaco. So it was actually on Dragon's Den, mm -hmm. uh, like a long time ago, like seven years ago. And what they do is they bring like life size games to corporate events, and then you can host your office parties or whatever year end things. So I'm like a freelance um, Game Boy. <laughs> yeah, a Game Boy. <laughs> yeah. And so I just go there, I uh, set up the games, and then show people the rules and it's very like they just give me a call i just got put on a list and they give me a call when there's an event and they're like hey can you work today and i'm like yes yeah it's <laughs> like the perfect yeah. perfect job for 
a student because if it works in your schedule, sweet, go. It's very straightforward, low stress, and it just works perfectly with your schedule. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see how it works out. Yeah, we were really excited because we knew Julian wanted to do something kind of part time just to bring in a little bit of extra cash. And then when he applied for this one, we didn't realize it was going to be this kind of freelance on a call list thing. We thought it was going to be more of a set schedule. But then in the interview, when we found out what the setup was like, we were like, holy smokes, how did we not think of, you know, applying for freelance jobs like this before? So it's exciting. Yeah. A lot of things are exciting. Another thing that's exciting. (laughs) We have a listener from Australia. Yeah. Shout out if you're still listening. I hope you're still listening by the time this comes out. Yeah. Yeah. And so I have a request of you. I would like you to comment, send us an email, a DM, or something on any of the platforms, and let us know what topic you want us to to look at next. Okay, That'd be I awesome. Love it. <laughs> I I would be so baffled if someone could comment besides like our family <laughs> <laughs> and left a comment. That would be so cool. So okay, awesome. Well. Whoever is listening from Australia, we love you. And please let us know what you would like to hear an episode on. And we will gladly do it. Awesome. Well, (laughs) let's get started. Okay. (laughs) Okay, I know we said we're going to start the episode now, but I need to also shout out my sweater that I'm wearing. If you're on YouTube, you can see this. Woohoo! If you're not, I'll post it on our Instagram stories as well. It says Mrs. Quickstad EST 2022. And I changed into this at our reception. <laughs> so I wasn't actually, pl- I was planning to wear this the morning after for breakfast with everyone. But then. I got a sunburn on the wedding and we were just getting tired and someone stepped on and broke my dress. And so we were like, you know what? We need to change. But I didn't have any other clothes with me except for what I planned to wear for breakfast the next morning. So I threw this on and it ended up being the best thing ever because everyone just loved it. It was so sweet. I'm so glad that I got to wear it in the evening so more people got to see it. And especially people in Julian's family, seeing their own last name on there, they're like, oh my goodness, I love it so much. So I was glad that it worked out so well. But I actually originally ordered a different version of this that was hand embroidered, embroidered. but there was unfortunately a confusion about the size of the embroidery on it. And I had got it handmade on Etsy. And when we got it, It was not what I was hoping it would be. It was like in the center of the chest, but it was tiny, like (laughs) maybe two inches. And I thought it was going to cover the whole chest part. And so then luckily Julian saw how disappointed I was that the sweater didn't work out. And the next day he went out and he got this one made for me at a store right by our house and surprised me. So good husband material there (laughs) for sure. Okay, now you can start the episode. Sorry. (laughs) Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, we're doing an episode on weddings. (laughs) (laughs) But in case you're worried, we're going to try to make sure this isn't like a a vlog of our wedding. (laughs) And we're kind of going to go over the little, maybe some of the nuances of a wedding. the Some of the psychology of weddings, marriages, um, divorces prenups, all that different stuff. Um, but it's going to be less of a academic learning episode as more as a conversation between the two of us. Yeah, like let's be real. Weddings are such an interesting topic and obviously it's on our mind right now. So when we got back, we were just talking about so much and we we're like, wow, I feel like we've learned so much going through this process. It'd be interesting to read a little bit more in, online and see like what other people have to say about some of these topics and then 
So I don't know everything that Julian has for us to talk about today, but I'm so excited to see the different topics and we'll of course add our own commentary based on our experiences onto it. But just one note that obviously everyone's experience getting married is completely different. Weddings are treated differently in different cultures. So Julian and I are only approaching this through our lens and our experience that we had in our wedding in Canada, in Alberta, a small town kind of community. So there's no right way or wrong way to do things. And we're just talking kind of about our experiences and whatever interesting things Julian found online. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can't really speak on someone else's no. experiences, right? <laughs> but um, so the first part of our episode today, I wanted to talk about traditions. So there's, go ahead. <laughs> I just going to say, yeah, there's so many traditions tied up into weddings. So yeah. And a lot of the time people don't even know why the tradition is there mm -hmm. because that's how their parents have done it and their grandparents. And it's just how it's always been done. For sure. Yeah. But um, there's a purpose to tradition. It's like, why would you do a tradition? Like, why wouldn't you just do your own thing all the time? Mm -hmm. But it kind of brings a, it brings a closeness between people and like generations. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it like creates a sense of belonging and identity. Yeah, for sure. Like if someone, you know, your grandparents did something at their wedding and then your parents did it and then all of them get to watch you do it, it definitely creates this different connection where I can see if someone, you know, decided to go in a completely different direction than the generations before them did, it would in some way almost feel offensive or hurtful to their, you know, older family members who would feel like, oh, so you're saying how we did it was wrong or something. So hmm. there's definitely a lot of expectations and stuff tied up with the idea of doing all of these traditions and making decisions that feel right for you and for your partner and how you want your day to look and feel for yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, um, doing it differently from your parents or grandparents, they would be offended. Um, you know, like part of life is kind of like, having offspring <laughs> and like giving something else to the world kind of thing and mm -hmm. raising in the way you would like them to be hopefully um and having a sense of continuity Conti continuity gonna, continuity <laughs> yes i knew i was gonna stumble over that. <laughs> um but yeah and then i think a lot of people that were previously mar married have fun at weddings because they go and they probably remember their wedding mm -hmm, absolutely and then they also have that conversation it's like oh they did it this way and we did it this way yeah that's definitely something i'm sure people love going to weddings is that kind of comparison about because especially you know once you've been to several weddings you'll have seen people do it in so many different ways and i think that's something that people learn from as well not just from their family members and how their weddings were, because, well, you wouldn't have even been there for their weddings, most likely. But, you know, when you get to kind of mine and Julian's age and our mid-20s, you start to have friends who are getting married and you get to go to their weddings and see what they do and kind of, like, just learn <laughs> somewhat, I guess, on TV, mm -hmm. see things that happen and try to build your own image. But then there's still those traditions where you're like, well, you know... I, I want to still do this or still do that because it's a tradition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and like a wedding also creates a like core memory or moment in your life. Yeah. And the fact, not only weddings, but traditions in general that say a family has, it really creates your identity. And it, especially as a kid, it forms how, um, how you see yourself and who you are, how you fit into your family. So in the sense of a wedding, it's a lot of work to get it all done and stuff, but the payoff is substantial because it creates this core memory of your life, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would definitely say that our wedding gave us so much time with each of our families, and it's just such a joyous, exciting moment. And you're right about that kind of like core memory. 
Because there's only so many moments that people can remember for a really long period of time, right? But I feel like weddings are one of those things that everyone can easily look back on and be like, oh, I remember something from that wedding. Mm -hmm. And so now it's like we have this close connection with all of our relatives and our friends who are there that it's like, you know, in 30 years, we'll have a moment from it Mm -hmm. or photos to look back on just some kind of special memory and connection Mm -hmm. that you can build with each other that's a good way to put it it's special because you can also have traditions like birthday parties or like thanksgiving christmas all those different things yes they're fun and they again are part of who you are but you do it so many times you do it yearly Mm -hmm. and it's not it's different yeah absolutely (laughs) This is something you hopefully do once. Yes, I hope. <laughs> we will do it once, but yeah. hopefully everyone else uh, is the same way. Do you, uh, thinking of this, do you know any traditions, not just weddings, but that stick out to you? Yeah, I don't I'm- know if I was <laughs> at really any weddings in my childhood because none of my family lived near me. So that kind of sounds disappointing. I don't know if I was really at like any weddings, but one thing I'll comment about traditions that did stand out to me was the whole, oh geez, Louise, what is it? It's like, um, something new, something, what is it? Something new, something blue. blue. No. Something used. Something borrowed, something new, something blue. Wow. Why can I not remember the order this goes? But you guys, whoever's listening, I'm sure you've heard the saying before. Something new, something borrowed, something new, something blue, whatever. Wow, I can't. This is the biggest little brain fart. But that saying, um, someone asked me afterwards, like a couple weeks later, a week or so later, they were like, what was your something? Like, did you do that? What was your something blue? And like, you're something borrowed and something new. (laughs) I was like, oh, I didn't do it. (laughs) And to be honest, it just didn't even cross my mind. Which is funny because that is like a staple tradition that's in movies all the time. And for some reason, it just, it didn't even cross my mind. I tried to do something borrowed. I wanted to use grandma's veil. And I took her veil and got it cleaned up and stuff and altered a little bit um, where I was getting my dress done. But unfortunately, it just, they weren't able to get it in good enough condition. It was too stiff and it, when they put it in my hair, it just like would stand straight, Mm -hmm. straight out and it wouldn't like lay down on my back. So unfortunately we didn't use that, but that would have been really special. And I really wish that I had been able to make that work. But an interesting tradition that for some reason didn't cross my mind and it doesn't bother me that I didn't do it, but I'm just like, oh, hmm, yeah, didn't. (laughs) didn't think of that oops <laughs> bride fail <laughs> i don't know we get to choose what we do on our wedding day yeah What's were the there any day? were there any traditions that you feel like we did that you were really excited about or a tradition that you are glad we didn't do <laughs> um i think the biggest one was the i used to know the bride when she used to rock and roll. Oh, the song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you had to dance with everyone. Yeah, explain to our listeners what that is. Yeah, so the the song is I used to rock. I used to know the bride when she used to rock and roll by Nick Lowe. And basically what happens is everyone at the wedding gets on the dance floor when the song's playing and they circle around the bride. So the bride stands in the middle and then once the music starts, <laughs> People take their turns dancing with her quickly, and it's really fast-paced. Very fast-paced. <laughs> yeah, exhausting. I got and my head hit a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> so people jump in, and then some. the next person just takes the bride away <laughs> from the previous person, and it's basically, what, three minutes of constant dancing for Gianna. Yeah. <laughs> that was something Julian had warned me about. That was a tradition in his family, and I had never heard of that being done before. And then suddenly our DJ Lionel, uh, Julian's uncle, he called me out onto the dance floor and 
It happened. <laughs> <laughs> you probably forgot about it too. I had so many other things were going on and then suddenly it started playing and I was like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. It was a good memory. Although it was very stressful because intentionally, of course, each person who grabs you to dance with you is dancing like in a completely different way than the person you were just with. And you're only with each person for like five to 10 seconds. And so it's very chaotic. <laughs> but then once it, Julian could tell I was like about done. And so he came and stepped in and then that ended the dance and it was <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yes. I'm glad we did that one. Uh, other one I have is the flowers on the path. Um, when the bride walks down the, the aisle for uh -huh. the ceremony. Do you know where that comes from? Oh, okay. I thought Julian was just like trying to make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was like calling me out for <laughs> exposed. So, yes, that's a tradition that you would have flowers down the aisle. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I had this fun idea to buy a bunch of different colored dried florals and I thought wow all of these because they looked so bright and beautiful I was like these would look so pretty down the aisle I was so excited about them had bought well mom bought them for me but she had bought a lot of them and I was so excited about them and then when I'm walking down the aisle with mom and dad I go and so our wedding was outside and I go someone forgot to put out the flowers <laughs> and mom and dad are like oh no they're out there and they're like look and then i can see just a few of them and as yeah as you're walking down the aisle as i'm walking down the aisle <laughs> and i was like oh <laughs> that was not the vision i had in my mind so that was one thing i was like obviously it was fine it made no significant difference at all but i was just like oh dang that did not live up to the vision I thought I was like, oh, I'm going to do something unique. It will be because our wedding was kind of a little bit of a, you know, bohemian kind of country style. And so I just thought that would look really cute down the aisle instead of the traditional white petals. Mm -hmm. But nope, I should have just got the white petals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it actually like the literal meaning behind it is like back in the ancient days is like, like for women to be flowering sweet and plentiful, right? Oh, you know okay. That? I know. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. but go ahead. I was going to say that's interesting that there's like a meaning to it mm -hmm. beyond just like, let's make this look pretty. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I assumed it was white because, you know, it's supposed to be like pure mm -hmm. as you're walking down the aisle across like the white flowers. Probably something to do with that too. Yeah. And then Gianna tried to be crazy and do bright colored florals and it just did not work. <laughs> um, the next one I found, uh, tying the knot. Literally, it uh, used to happen that they would <laughs> tie the hands of the groom and the bride together. Oh, so that's okay. where tied the knot came from. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, we did kind of our own version of that in a sense. With our tying the rope ceremony. Yeah, yes. Same idea. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to tell people what we did? Sure, yeah. Um, so we basically did, it's called the braiding of the rope, I think, right? Yeah. It has a few different names it goes by, but that's a good way to say it. So there's three strands of rope that we have on our rope. And we actually started with the uh, bridesmaids and we pass it through all the guests at the wedding all the way through the the groomsman up to the best man and then hands it to the officiant again. And, and each, each guest like touching it was their symbol of blessing onto our marriage as the rope passed through mm -hmm. instead of we didn't do the typical, the, I guess that's a tradition we skipped as well. We didn't do the typical, does anyone object to this marriage? And instead we used the rope as each person's sign of blessing. Mm -hmm. And, and then at the end, one rope is me, one rope is Gianna, and the third rope is God. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to symbolize that three strands are stronger than one, and it's there's less chance of it breaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I wish that we had it with us. Julian's parents are coming for a visit this weekend and then we'll have our sign. So once we have that, I will make sure to put it in here. I'll also put it in our Instagram stories. But for our beautiful, beautiful rope, one of my bridesmaids, her mom, Angie, who is absolutely amazing and so talented and creative, created a board for us that has the Bible verse on it, and um, it's Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12, I think. Three chords are strong, or is not, three chords are not easily broken, Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. And she made this amazing sign for us, and so I'm going to have that on our Instagram. I'll put it in our highlights so people can see it, and I'll take her. Her username on all of her accounts is Heritage Ties, and absolutely check out her work because she is the most beautiful human and also most creative and talented artist. I'm not sure what you mean. Creator? Something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She's awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> um, the next one, you probably know this one is pretty, the ring finger. Um, it was commonly believed that the, the vein ran from the fourth finger directly to the heart. Okay. I have heard that before. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and that's where that comes from. Interesting. I wonder why someone decided that. Well, it's it was before like science was evolved enough that they could tell, but they, for whatever reason, figured that that was the finger. I know what I'm just saying. Like, I wonder why. Like, what in the world would have caused them to, you know, decide? Hmm. Like, I'm looking at my fingers and I'm like, my veins don't look like more prominent <laughs> <laughs> on that spot, but That's interesting. Good question. Well, it's okay. I'm just, I'm glad it's that finger and not the middle finger. That would look, I'm going to put my ring on there now. Because like I could have seen actually the middle finger having been it because technically the middle finger would be like balanced, right? It would look very balanced. It's guess, often yeah. your longest finger. Mm -hmm. So I could have seen historically people having decided to put your wedding ring on your middle finger. Like I feel like that almost would have made more sense, but. I like how it looks on your actual wedding finger. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Um, the next one, have you heard of the throwing rice at the newlyweds? Yes, I have. Yeah. That one's supposed to symbolize increasing one's assets. Oh, yes. Give me all that rice. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually um, not a good one because that's like a choking hazard for birds and stuff. And I think... Rice? Yeah. Oh, they choke on rice? I feel like I've read that somewhere because for our wedding, we were going to scrap that and we had a bunch of, we ended up forgetting, to, <laughs> I guess it's something we forgot to, we forgot to have them set out so people could throw it when we exited the aisle, but we had a bunch of leaves cut mm -hmm. up and so we were having leaf confetti so that it's like environmentally friendly and wouldn't harm any of the animals outside and stuff because rice and things like that are actually, I believe, like not environmentally friendly and can present a danger to like birds and things that would eat the rice because the rice shouldn't be digested raw, right? So something like that. What about pigeons? Oh, no more <laughs> pigeons. We talk about pigeons too much. <laughs> no, I'll just set a, a plate of rice out, uncooked rice out for them. <laughs> going to call PETA on us. Yeah, yeah. These pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a lot of the traditions um, actually had, like, to do with evil spirits. Oh. Yeah, yeah. so one was the, the veil. It was to protect um, a lot of people. I, I, some people think it's, like, to protect the identity, revealing the bride, but it was to protect her from evil spirits that would come and try to take her away from the groom. Oh my gosh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Even the white dress was supposed to do that. Um, I don't know. Basically, almost all the traditions you can think of, besides the few I've named, are uh, to do with evil spirits. That is so interesting. Yeah. That must be to do with like a specific culture or something maybe that had those like i feel like maybe 
there's different origins of these traditions that happened like in more than one place at a time or something, if that makes sense. Um, a lot of the actually, for sure, the one that comes off the top of my head is China. Um, ancient China had those traditions. Interesting, because I actually think, no one quote me on this, but I think that in China, I think they wear like red dresses oh, yeah, on yeah. their wedding, yep. I believe. Um, um, I remember reading something about the color is supposed to ward off something. Interesting. Yeah. See, because I've always believed, and from how it's presented in TV shows and movies, the reason for the white dress is like a sign of purity. And people say that if you're not a virgin when you get married, that you should be wearing an ivory or a cream or something and not oh. a pure white because they have that in movies <laughs> where someone will be getting married and it'll be people on the side will be like, oh, I see she decided to wear a white dress. She <laughs> should think so, huh? <laughs> Type thing. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know that one. Yeah, and like people, if they're getting married for their second wedding, often will oh, wear yeah. like a goldy creamy beigey kind of warm dress mm -hmm. versus like a starch white hmm. i don't like that tradition that idea no <laughs> no it just obviously you're getting married twice but like why would you start off your like your next marriage like basically saying you're tarnished <laughs> yeah it's, i don't like that idea yeah, well, I think lots of people wear different colored dresses mm -hmm. now. Yeah, yeah. Not in consideration of that, but just because like people have different skin tones and stuff. I tried mm -hmm. on some kind of more ivory dresses and just because I'm so, 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 so pale and pinky colored, those don't look very nice on me. And so I just decided mm. that the pure white was good. But the white of my dress ended up being like so white because... Mm -hmm. Um, for our listeners, I ordered my dress. I had it handmade by this creator called Stylish Brides on Etsy. It came from the Ukraine. And the ladies there make all of the dresses themselves. And they were so incredibly talented. And so I just picked all of the stuff online and like in conversation with the designer, figured everything out. And when I got the dress, it was like so white that it almost had like a blue tinge mm -hmm. like it was so 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 sh shockingly white i was like wow this is a crisp starch <laughs> bright pure white <laughs> mm -hmm. it looked beautiful in the day thank you love <laughs> another tradition um is pin money to the bride this is actually a cuban tradition oh. so it's anyone that dances with the bride has to pin money to her dress and it's a a way to pay for the wedding and start their life together. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. I hate that. <laughs> I don't know what they pin the money with. Yeah, that's just my thought. There must be, maybe, I, if someone is familiar with the tra this tradition, please let us know um, somewhere in the comments on YouTube or on Instagram because I'm very interested. I'd love to learn more about that because in my mind, I'm just picturing like you're trying to dance and these people are like trying to like stab you with like <laughs> pins into money and then also like destroying your dress with all these pinholes in mm -hmm. it like i i think that's a cute tradition of a way to like share money with the bride and stuff mm -hmm. but the logistics of it stress me out a little mm -hmm. yeah yeah no i agree um the next one rain on the wedding day it's supposed to symbolize fertility and cleansing uh, what about rain the day before <laughs> <laughs> i don't know it's a good, uh, probably means the same thing. Yeah, for sure. We had rain, horrible rainstorms leading up to our wedding. Mm -hmm. And then in the afternoon, the day before, it cleared off and everything dried out perfectly in time for the wedding. Mm -hmm. Thankfully. Yeah. Mazel tov. Mm -hmm. Any idea what that means? Well, that's from the, oh my gosh, why am I blinking? Uh, Greek, Jewish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I saying Greek? <laughs> we just watched my yeah. big fat Greek wedding, yes. and my mind was immediately going to there. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it means good luck, like a blessing, kind of. Yes. Yeah. And as the glass glass shatters, 
may our marriage never break. They do that during the ceremony, right? I think it's the end of it. At the end of the ceremony. Yeah, yeah okay. they end it and they... Don't they like step on yeah, the plates, right? Yeah. Step on it and then everyone goes, Mazel Tov! Yeah, that's a, that's a cute tradition, mm -hmm. obviously, if that's part of your culture, yeah, religion. Yeah. Um, last one here I got is uh, shotgun wedding. Do you know what that means? Yeah, if the bride's pregnant. Basically, yeah, it's a rushed wedding. Yeah. 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 But uh, that ends our tradition segment. <laughs> um, I wanted to also talk about wedding expectations. Uh, so everything, obviously you want everything on your wedding to go as planned. And that's why you do the rehearsal. <laughs> oh my goodness. Our rehearsal was a game changer. We had for um, even going down the aisle, like just making sure people felt comfortable and had the timing right and that the groomsmen took the bridesmaids to their spot and everything, right? Like it just, it is a stressful thing and it might, people might, I know some people were like, oh, do we really need to do this rehearsal? And I was like, trust me, when you get, you're standing at the top of the hill to come because our wedding was down a hill. And so our bridal party had to walk down a hill. And I was like, when you get to the top of that hill morning of, you're going to be standing there and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, where do I go? What do I do? <laughs> so the rehearsal, everyone was very grateful afterwards. And especially we did a rehearsal as well for our grand entrance into the reception hall, which was a, it was a very simple thing that we did. And again, people were complaining just slightly of like, ah, do we have to do this? Like, let's keep going you know and I was like you guys trust me you're gonna want to just feel comfortable the day of and so we did it because there was like certain parts of the song and then you kind of had to wait until someone got to like this part of the floor until the next person came out just to make sure the timing worked and the MC, my brother Jeffrey could introduce them and again afterwards people they were like can we do that one more time because <laughs> <laughs> they were like that was more stressful than I thought so that would be a big piece of advice that I would give people is always make sure you do the rehearsal. It's so worth it. Yeah, no, it was definitely, it was needed. Um, so some of these, uh, I got off a website here and some of the most common expectations of the wedding. Okay. You will go to bed early and get a full eight <laughs> hours of sleep before the big day. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> That's the goal, is to get to bed early. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't happen. We were at the hall until very, very, very late. I think by the time I left, was it maybe like 11.30? Oh, yeah, it was late. Yeah, yeah, it was late. And then I had to get home and I had to shower. I had to pack my bag for the next day. I had a bunch of messages I needed to send to people I had some things on the website that I had to update and I actually ended up calling Julian crying because him and my dad wanted me to change some directions on the website that like I had made the website months in advance, had asked so <laughs> many times for people to like review, check things. And then the night before the wedding, they're like, you need to change these directions. And like, I was so exhausted at this point. I was like on my laptop and I was like trying to do it. And then I called Julian and I was like, I can't do this right now. And I like started crying. I was like, I'm so tired. Like my brain's done. I can't read type in directions and edit the website. Like, so luckily everyone made it there with the directions that we had on. Yep. But I think that would just be a piece of advice is that, you just got to let some things go and <laughs> everything's not going to be completely perfect. And there was no reason that I needed to feel so pressured about updating this thing that I was so exhausted and had to cry <laughs> because I was like feeling guilty that I wasn't going to edit it. And people had asked me to edit it, but I just, you know, so it's like, just let things go. Everything can get done sometimes and it's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's, uh, that's one of the biggest expectations is that everything will go the way you envisioned it and it'll be easy. It's not like it's 
hard in the sense that I don't know how I'm going to word this, but like it's worth it. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> there's some stresses you have to deal with, but yeah. Was there anything that didn't go right in your perspective, like that you had thought was going to go differently? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I thought it was going to get to bed earlier. That was like the biggest thing. Yeah. Nothing really went. It was perfect. Julian was like, I'm going to stay up with you. Like he was texting me and I was like, hey, you need to go to bed. But I still had things I needed to do. And he was like, no, I'm going to stay up until you go to bed. But he didn't quite make it. (laughs) But I told him, I was like, you need to go to sleep just because I have things I need to do. Like you still. Mm -hmm. But yeah, everyone just, it's a late night beforehand. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So the other um, side of a wedding or prior to a wedding a lot of people get prenups. Yeah. So I don't want to spend too much time on this, but it is important to mention because a lot of people get prenups. Um, well, I had just seen, um, I told Julian that we need to talk, needed to talk about this on the podcast during this episode because I was watching YouTube and this was just like a couple nights ago and this video was recommended for me from Shark Tank because I watch a lot of their clips on YouTube and it was for a hello prenup and basically it was this online service to get a prenup for like $500 compared to the normal like $5,000 or Mm -hmm. more dollars and it's really fast and simple and so I watched their pitch on the episode and I was like oh wow we totally need to talk about prenups Mm -hmm. yes we definitely do um, I would say I'm gonna be honest. I don't think uh, prenups are usually that good <laughs> for a marriage, mm-hmm. but sometimes maybe it's kind of a just a logistical thing of parents that had kids from previous marriages and they want the prenup so that say they divorced and then they had to split assets and stuff that their assets that they already had go to their kids Mm -hmm. rather than split between the, all the kids or have to, I guess, Mm -hmm. which still, I guess is (laughs) kind of has a pretense that you believe things won't work out. Yeah. I think that's the weird vibe with prenups is that it's essentially, you know, in some ways being like, I don't really think this is going to work out, you know? Yeah. I don't trust you. (laughs) Yeah. But then, I'm not completely against them in the sense that I've seen people and heard of, you know, people, like, you know, that friends know of or something who get married and they so genuinely are in love. And then the person just like a switch changes who mm-hmm. they're married to. And, you know, it's obviously a crazy thing. Mm-hmm. And you would pray it would never happen to you. And I feel very confident it won't happen to us, love book. <laughs> but it's something that you do see sometimes and you're like, oh, wow. Like, mm-hmm. how did they marry that person? But then it's like, well, that's mm-hmm. probably not how they were when they got married. Yeah. I do have some stats on divorces and why and reasons why you okay. should you could get divorced um, just shortly after this. We'll definitely talk about that. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> that one website I told you about that when I was looking at prenups. Um, <laughs> claims that prenups can be messy but still romantic. <laughs> it is the start of building trust together. <laughs> it's like, Bill, the whole point of it is that you don't trust them. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I also can see prenups in a context of, you know, if your family has a lot of assets that you want to protect in a sense that like in some way the prenup isn't even for you, but it's for like maybe your say you have or uh, part ownership or, and things yeah, yeah like i can see how like when there's different businesses involved and other stakeholders or something mm-hmm. that your marriage could impact yeah why there would be needs for it so i don't think like there's never ever mm-hmm. a need but you know you just hope and pray mm-hmm. that that's not going to be you but i'm sure as you're going to tell us with the stats obviously unfortunately it is the something that would be helpful for a lot of people. Right. And that actually does make sense. I could see it less distrusting of a couple to get a prenup if it's on the pretense that their family is asking for it to protect their assets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you even just think of like Hollywood, right? Mm-hmm. 
actors and actresses who are worth insane amounts of money. I don't know. I can see why they would want to protect it, especially the way that marriages come and go Mm -hmm. in that kind of environment they're in. I'm like, a lot of them I don't think are entering marriage necessarily for all of the right reasons or Mm -hmm. should necessarily be getting married. Obviously, this is just my completely personal opinion, but I think in those situations prenups make sense for them because I don't think they're actually going into it with the intention of it being a lifelong commitment. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know if that really makes sense what I'm trying to say, but I think there are certain people in the Hollywood environment who just have a misconstrued perception of at least what we consider marriage to be, right? Like they have a different idea of what that commitment is that you're making to each other and that's why it's so normal and they're like well it's likely that they would all want to use those to protect Mm -hmm. their assets because they have a lot of assets (laughs) true yeah yeah definitely and you know what what if you get married to amber (laughs) heard that would suck you'd probably try taking all your assets well i think they had a prenup do they I'm, I okay. don't know. I'm I glad. Assume. Probably a good thing. I assume would. they did because I yeah. think she only got like $7 million from him or something like that, which definitely wouldn't have been half of what he would have. So Right. Yep. Yep. Um, another reason, like you mentioned, the lifelong commitment is what it should be for why you're getting married. But you can, you can get married for the wrong reasons sometimes. Um, one of the big ones is financially, um, independent of say your family or whatever, right? Mm. Um, having someone to provide for you or I don't know, maybe for tax reasons, something like that or insurance coverage. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've heard of that before. People who aren't necessarily huge fans of marriage necessarily, but they are like, well, we should get married so that you can get on my insurance type mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe you just need a green card. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> uh, so talking about these prenups, um, there's actually another thing. You can get postnups, I call them. It's basically oh. just like a reassessment after you get married. So okay. you get more assets or something like that, right? Um, and People do that too, I guess. Again, that would even be worse than a prenup. Yeah, that'd be like, mm, we've been doing this for a while. I'm not feeling so good. <laughs> yeah. um, but this all leads into our conversation about divorces. And I mentioned we we're going to talk about reasons why you could be divorced. And you were talking about the benefit of someone just like completely changing after they get married, right? Yeah. Um, there's like a lot of reasons you should get divorced, like infidelity, Um Domestic or sexual abuse. That's a big one, obviously. Psychological abuse. Um, another big one that people get divorced for is addiction. Mm, yeah, that uh, can be so hard well, on again, that would any be, relationships. Yeah, that would be someone um, being a different person too, right? Like yeah. Changing after. Um, married at a young age. Um, or another one is being having an early pregnancy. So you... I guess get shotgun mar- wedding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have a shotgun wedding, only get married for the pregnancy. So your families approve of it or something. Yeah. I don't know. That's something that I think is so interesting that has changed at through the generations is getting married young. Cause my mom and dad, they started dating when my mom was 15 and my dad was 17 or something. Mm-hmm. Like they met at, um, church prior to that and then started dating on her 15th birthday and then my mom graduated from high school a year early and then when she turned 18 they got married and she was yeah 18 and my dad was 20 and they are like the perfect couple everyone in the world who ever meets them is like oh they're my second parents I love them so much and 
obviously I loved having them as my parents and I'm so grateful for the role model that they gave me about what a mm -hmm. marriage can look like. And also my grandparents did that for me as well. But I think it's so interesting that, you know, they got married so young, but it's so clear to anyone who sees them together and knows them that they are absolutely the perfect people for one another. Mm -hmm. But they were able to make that decision so young. Mm -hmm. I think to myself, when I was 15, you know, who I was dating when I was 15, who I was dating when I was 18, I'm like, oh, geez, Louise, <laughs> thank goodness we didn't uh, make any <laughs> shotgun wedding decisions or something like that. Because obviously now at this point, it was once we were together, it was such a natural, easy mm -hmm. decision. But it feels like that because we had so much life experience as well. Like it was just so natural and easy. It almost didn't even feel like a decision for us. It was just mm -hmm. like inevitable, obvious. Mm -hmm. But then I think, you know, back then I'm like, wow, how mm -hmm. could people make that decision? Do you think uh, like mentally people matured faster when they're younger? Because part of the reason I think that could be true is because as you have hardships, it forces you to become wiser and to learn to overcome what's happening to you, right? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean like you have to go through some serious trauma, but nowadays we have it very easy and everything's like at our fingertips. And even we didn't even like, for example, <laughs> looking up words in a dictionary to learn how to spell them. Can you imagine having to do that now? <laughs> Just stuff like that. You actually had to for or not force yourself, but like intentionally do things mm -hmm. more so. Do you think that could be part of the reason why it would be easier for them? I think I agree with part of what I think you're trying to get at. Let me know if this is what you're trying to say, but essentially that now we have a plethora of choices in every aspect of our life. Whereas mm -hmm. back then you met less people. It was more difficult to meet people. You didn't have online opportunities to meet people. So it was like, if you met someone and things were good with them, it was like, it just seemed probably like a no brainer to them that, mm -hmm. well, it's probably as good as it's going to get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like better take advantage and seal, seal the deal here before I get, you know, over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to turn 19 and be an old <laughs> <Yeah>. spinster. <laughs> But now I think it's mm -hmm. hard actually for people to make that choice because there's just so many options or feels like there's so many options mm -hmm. out there with social media. You're constantly being exposed to other people. And I think that some people might feel almost like FOMO, you know, mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I don't want to commit to someone because what is the next person's better or the next person mm -hmm. and people I'm just assuming have this fear of getting married and then, and, and it's true for a lot of people that they get married and then, you know, they see people out and they go, hmm, that mm -hmm. person looks pretty good. And yep. obviously I have no idea what the rates of infidelity or things like that are from back in the day until now. But I think it's a lot easier with online means that people mm -hmm. have wandering eyes and things like that that make people feel less confident about moving forward mm -hmm. with such a serious commitment yeah grass is always greener i guess yes <laughs> yeah. but it's because you don't water your own grass mm -hmm. <laughs> marriage takes work <laughs> yes i guess i also think there's this perception that marriage um you need to be like this perfect match to get married mm -hmm. nowadays and maybe that's part of it like you you said um maybe it like i don't think you were saying like settling but it's like you met less people so you were happy with what you were given kind of thing mm -hmm. or what situation you're in but now you can see so many different options and you're like what if uh, and you can try to look for that perfect thing but maybe that's not the whole point. Yeah. Yeah. Like with online dating, you can literally see in front of you like a breakdown of who this person is. So mm -hmm. I agree. Our expectations are muffled. Yeah. Yeah. But before we go, <laughs> we, we can actually talk about that. I like that conversation. Before we go on though, 
I just want to mention that for divorces um, right now, 68% of Canadians think that conflict over money is the main reason for filing a divorce. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Which I, I don't know. Maybe you can help me understand this. Do you think it's conflict over how to spend their finances or like someone spending way too much over their budget? Hmm. I could see that being part of it because it's so easy to spend money right now Mm -hmm. online shopping. Like it's just at a click of a button. And when you're spending money like that, not through actually like handing cash to somebody, Mm -hmm. it might not feel like you're spending money. So I think that's definitely something that could create stress in relationships if one partner is just like always like, oh, we'll just order it from Amazon and stuff, which like sometimes we find ourselves doing and we talk about it and we're like, okay, no more like gadgets from Amazon Mm -hmm. because Amazon is terrible for that. And it's so easy to just get swooped into, you know, you see these videos all the time on social media that are like my top Amazon finds, like best gadgets on Amazon and you see these things and you're like oh that would make washing the dishes so much easier oh that would be so convenient in the bathroom or for laundry Mm -hmm. just like you don't need all of these random little gadgets that make your life you know 0.2 percent easier (laughs) (laughs) it is a like 70 percent of people so I don't know what part of it too is probably say fighting over bills payments all that different stuff too yeah and just the stress that comes from it and it could be jobs mm-hmm. as well like yeah. I, I don't, things. i'm not sure in which direction it could go i'm sure it goes in multiple directions but if someone wants to stay home but someone wants both of you to work or like vice versa mm-hmm. right like i think that's definitely something that can create conflict with people if it's not a conversation that you had in advance right because people are obviously just different and if you don't know what your expectations for each other are Mm -hmm. that could create a problem like um just thinking of some people like in my life and different dynamics that we see like my mom and your mom both have careers Mm -hmm. and our dads both have careers and they've all been like working and that was no oops sorry (laughs) that was normal for us growing up to see both of our parents working Mm -hmm. and both of my brothers have gotten married and their wives are for the most part like stay at home with the kids which is like a job absolutely Mm -hmm. a very very hard job and they're both so spectacular at it and you can see that like that's one of the major things that they were meant to do in life because they're so good at it and so good Mm -hmm. with their children and stuff But then there are people who are like, you know, maybe like our parents were like, nope, I Mm -hmm. want to have a, have a career. And like, for us, like definitely, like I've not been (laughs) doing this much schooling and getting my PhD to then not work afterwards and stuff. So Mm -hmm. I think it's just so many different dynamic work for people, but it's important to have those conversations before you get married so that you know and are in agreement about what it's going to look like Mm -hmm. because like what if you and i got married and then (laughs) i have like all this crazy student debt that i've accumulated from many 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 years of going to school and i'm not even done my phd and then we got married and then i was like i think i'm gonna drop out of my program (laughs) i want to stay at home right like Mm because obviously that just wouldn't make sense and we've had those conversations so we know we're on the same page but I don't Mm -hmm. know that was kind of long-winded, but I'm just trying to say that it's a conversation that should happen before marriage. But if it Mm -hmm. doesn't, I can understand how it would create issues. Yeah, definitely would. We were just talking about this, what the point of marriage is. Mm -hmm. And to add on to what I was previously saying about finding the perfect someone, I think people look for a marriage that makes them happy. And although, yes... You want to marry, you want to feel happy. You don't want to feel like like poop all the time. No. But happiness is a byproduct of the things that you do in your marriage and why it makes you so much happier and fulfilled and all this different stuff. In our previous episode, we talked about Viktor Frankl and the meaning 
uh, happiness is created by meaning rather than just the feeling of it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. And one of the big things I look forward to in our marriage is the selflessness and the growth aspect of our relationship. Um, I'm excited to see how you, you're going to grow as a person, right? And that's, and I want to help you grow. And that selflessness is, I think, part of a happy marriage. Mm -hmm. Or I hope, I hope it is. <laughs> <laughs> I see good things in our future. <laughs> yeah. Where it's the decisions you make are for the both of us, for example, compared to your mind thinking first of yourself and how you feel and how it makes you feel um, when they do something kind mm -hmm. of thing rather than how do we make this work? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it brings a sense of maturity, I think, relationships, lifelong commitments and long term relationships. I think it does. I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're definitely on to something with the idea of wanting to see growth in one another. Because, of course, this is just my opinion, but I feel like sometimes when people get married, they have this idea in their mind that I'm marrying you as mm -hmm. you are. Mm -hmm. And you need to stay like this because I love you as you are. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but marriage is lifelong hopefully mm -hmm. and who is going to stay the same throughout your life right mm -hmm. like obviously you're not hope anticipating any 180s or something necessarily being pulled but certainly people should hopefully want to see their partner grow like you said mm -hmm. and see small changes and ways you grow together unfortunately sometimes people do they grow apart but mm -hmm. i feel i don't know i just feel it like in my heart this thing that you need to be able to see that positive growth as like as you need to see their growth as something positive mm -hmm. and not as oh they're changing oh this isn't i don't know them anymore mm -hmm. they're changing and it's they're changing because they don't like me or something like mm -hmm. someone's positive growth isn't something or in most cases, isn't like a negative reflection of you necessarily. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I really And the like growth, that. specifically, the growth means, I think, more so a mindset and how you think about things. Not like a forward direction, say like your career. Mm -hmm. That's not what I mean by growth. Yeah. <laughs> I mean more growth like understanding yourself. Because obviously, maybe in your relationship, all you want to do is someone to feel comfortable with and you just go home and you watch TV together and that's fulfilling for you. Yeah. Like what's wrong with that? If that's what you want, mm -hmm. but if you're going to be happy doing that, you start to feel more comfortable around each other, which like in all relationships, but also you should feel like you understand yourself more because you're with them. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Which I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I know that's the feeling you should be having. <laughs> or at least the feeling that we have. Yes. Yeah. Um, again, also with the maturity part of it, I think it forces you to resolve issues and problem solve. Like I said, the selflessness where it's not a me versus you mindset, but a how do we make this work as a marriage? Mm -hmm. So that maturity sense is that you're able to problem solve better. It's like, it's not the only way you can <laughs> grow. <laughs> in yourself but it forces you to grow it's like getting a job and forcing yourself to work with other employees to keep your job mm -hmm. yeah whether you like it or not it is an aspect of our culture companies or businesses like people who are in a relationship most of the time i think it would be subliminal it depends on the job right but i'm thinking like um long-term jobs where the person's older they like to see that you're in a relationship because it shows character that you can problem solve and stuff like that. And you're in a happy or like a good marriage, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, compared to someone who has been divorced seven times. And again, it's the question is like, which came first? 
is it really them or are they just like is it their partners but you have to admit it it is a stain (laughs) on their character if they've been divorced seven times seven times yeah probably not looking so good (laughs) yeah i mean it, it literally shows that you either have poor choice in or not able to identify someone's character you don't know yourself not good at problem solving there's a lot of different things that could go wrong Mm -hmm. but if you've done it multiple times there's there's some concern there Mm -hmm. which is funny i it would be interesting to know what the numbers are for people who are in like high level positions what their divorce rates are Mm -hmm. because i feel like this is a very um kind of classist thing in a sense where that judgment would be used on someone who's in maybe lower or middle class Mm -hmm. where that would be a reflection of them. But then I could see people who are like, you know, in the top 1% or even, I don't know. I get what you're saying. That are wealthier and already hold the higher positions. Mm -hmm. They have like a different set of standards they would hold for themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. It's messed up, but Mm -hmm. probably. Yeah, there is a different. It, It also, again, it's like, like you said, the classes thing is that they would maybe see a divorce as, oh, they care about their job more than their marriage. <laughs> maybe. Honestly, <laughs> I could see that being an opinion. Yeah. You know what is something that I've heard before, too, is that people are more likely to get raises and promotions and stuff at jobs when they're married because being married shows that you're like long term, you're committed. Um, okay. I think it was actually on the two hot takes podcast mm-hmm. that we enjoy that they do Reddit stories. And I think there was, I'm positive it was from one of their episodes. They talked about this Reddit story, this girl submitted where her boyfriend, it was just her boyfriend, but she wanted to get married, but he said, no, he doesn't want to get married. But then she like came in the background during one of his like zoom calls with a coworker and mm-hmm. And the coworker said, like, oh, this must be your wife. Like, so nice to meet you type thing. And she's like, what? Wife? I'm not his wife and stuff. And then he, <laughs> her boyfriend was like, oh, babe, like, don't be silly and like, you know, whatever. And she talked to him about it later and he got mad at her and was like, you should, you embarrassed me. You should have just went along with it. Like, <laughs> da, 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 da. And turns out he doesn't want to commit to her and get married to her. But he lies and tells people mm-hmm. at his work that he's married because he thinks it makes him look mm-hmm. more stable or, you know, whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Hm. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. <laughs> so that's uh, pretty much it for our episode today. But um, we talked and we want to end this episode with some words of wisdom mm-hmm. that were shared um, during our ceremony mm-hmm. from our parents and grandparents. Yeah, my brother Jeffrey was our officiant for the wedding and also our MC, and he did such a wonderful job. Shout out to you, Jeffrey. Thank you so incredibly much. And so he read these beautiful words of wisdom from our family members, and so Julian and I, we're just going to take turns, and Julian is going to first read the one from his parents. All right. When bringing two individuals together with different experiences and traditions, it is important to have productive communication. Yes, it is. (laughs) And the one my parents gave, I actually think it's sweet because his parents and my parents both talked about different people coming together. So I thought that when we heard it at the wedding, I was like, oh, that's cute. So my mom and dad said, differences can be strengths. Often couples perceive their differences as weaknesses and retreat to their personal caves rather than try to understand and complement each other with those differences. Seek out each other's perspective. And from my grandma, always keep God at the center of your life. It will foster a successful marriage. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. And my grandma said, Say your sorry and mean it, and make sure you don't go to bed angry. Don't forget to laugh. Where's my grandma Elsie there? (laughs) Marriage is a precious thing. There will be ups and downs, and there will be disagreements. 
If you always love and respect each other, everything will work out. And to conclude, my grandpa said, he says, to work together and love together. It has worked for us since 1958. Always end the day with I love you. Hmm. Perfect. <laughs> I like those. Yeah. Great pieces of wisdom for us to hold on to. And hopefully they will be useful for anyone listening as well. Mm -hmm. If you have any topics that you would like us to cover, let us know in our DMs or through our email. Um let us know somewhere for sure and follow us on our social media. We are PWMW Podcast on everything. And if you are listening, you can check us out on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, you can also check us out on all podcast platforms. And if this was your first time listening to our podcast today and you made it all the way to the end, that's awesome. Thank you so much. But just so you know... Um, in normal episodes, it's usually going over like psychology topics and Julian is kind of teaching me about them and I'm asking him questions to learn more about the topic. So today was a bit of a different fun episode because we were in the wedding state of mind, but I hope you all had fun listening to this with us and we will catch you in the next episode. Awesome. Yeah. We'll be posting every Tuesday. So make sure you hit subscribe, follow, and set that auto download button to make sure you don't miss an episode. <laughs> See ya. Bye. <laughs>